Hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I'm James Curry with the Communication Department here at MCHD. I'm talking to Dr. Mike Hoppe. He's the senior pastor of Sarah Land United Methodist Church. Mike, good morning. Good morning, James. Great to be here. Thank you for being here again on uh, another one of our video series on Enneagram. Uh, today we're talking about uh, personality type number seven, which is the enthusiast. Um, like we mentioned before, um, <clears throat> there'll be some links here at the bottom of the video where you know someone can take the personality test. That's a paid test, but there's also free resources out there um, on YouTube, uh, just by Googling Enneagram personality profile. Um, also some books at the library too. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, just a quick overview, you know, we talked about the Enneagram personality profile just being beneficial because it helps to know yourself, helps to know your family members, your coworkers. Um, and it just kind of helps everyone kind of get along because you can go, oh, that's why Mike does what he does. Okay, because, you know, he is this personality type. Um, so uh, one, I'm sorry, you, uh, sorry, we skipped around a little bit, uh, the sevens, the enthusiast. So tell me what you know about the enthusiast. Yeah, I'd be glad to. There are nine personality types in the Enneagram, and it's great to take that test that you mentioned to find out what your particular score is. And then you can watch these videos will give you a great overview of, of the results. Uh, and if you happen to be a seven, um, you're called an enthusiast. Now, a seven isn't any worse or any better than any of the other types in the Enneagram test. And, and what I've discovered, interestingly, is that um, some people may discover their personality, and at first they think, oh, I wish I was a different number. I wish I had more of a different kind of a personality. And when you begin to study the um, Enneagram, you see there are pros and there are cons to every personality type. However, I have never met a seven who wished that they were another number. Uh, sevens tend to, at least in my experience, love being a seven. Sevens um, are optimistic. They love to have fun. Uh, they see the sunny side in everything, and uh, they love to try new things. Sevens are curious. They are adventurous for the most part, and, um, and part of that, that's the, that's the pros. Um, people love to be around sevens generally because they're the life of the party. They're uh, maybe they're the, the one that the teacher loves because they, they love what they're studying in class. You know, there are different sevens, but, but that generally describes them. But as I said, there are some pros and some cons. And if there is a con about a seven, it would be that sevens, in order to stay so optimistic, in order to stay so adventurous, they have to repress negativity. They have to push that down. And, um, and, and so they, they work extra hard. Uh, not to go there with their minds. You, you know what I mean? You th thinking about what's negative or when mm -hmm. something bad happens to, they have to work hard to compartmentalize that so it doesn't take over that joy that they have in their life. <clears throat> yeah, one thing I read about seven, excuse me just a moment. You talked about their approach to life. One thing I read about sevens is that they're, they're uh, categorized as the kid in the candy store. Mm. You know, every everything is exciting and fascinating to them and they want to try they want to try everything and one of the examples that was given was um they'll go to an ice cream shop and they can't decide do they want vanilla chocolate or strawberry so they'll get all three you know because they don't want to miss out on anything in life and you know that that could also be a downfall because it creates anxiety because you feel like you have to experience everything something something's going to get put on the back burner mm -hmm. i think that's a perfect analogy for a seven is an ice cream shop they want to try everything that's how they are in life they they have a lot of interests they're, they're they tend to be quick learners because they're so curious about life and they like to try a little bit of everything uh but but sometimes that maybe they can they can lack a little bit of focus because they they like to jump around and um in in several of our videos we've talked about what happens when a personality type is in a healthy place or when it's in a stressful place and for a seven uh when a seven is a, in a really healthy place they tend more towards um a five in their personalities what we might consider a more 
a positive aspect of a five, and that is that fives tend to be really focused. This, uh, fives are super laser focused. And so sevens will pick up a little bit on that when they are in a healthy place. Uh, at the same time, when a seven is in a stressful place, they might tend more towards a number one uh, and what we would consider to be the more, maybe a, 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 the con of a one or a more negative side of a one. They might tend towards being a little bit rigid or angry uh, when, when they get overstressed. It's important to know that because if you're married to a seven or if, you're, uh, if you are a seven and you see that anger, or that rigidity come out, then you can realize, oh, this is this is how I tend to respond in these kinds of moments. This is typical. And that can help us to be a little bit easier on ourselves, maybe, or on the people that we love. It just helps to know these kinds of things, to, to, to grow in our relationships. Right. Um, some characteristics of sevens, uh, I was just reading here. Um, they they uh, have the ability to absorb information, which would be language, facts, and information. And, you know, like we said, they have the ability to pick up on new skills very quickly. And they have a good mind-body coordination and manual dexterity. So they may be good at tennis or the guitar or the piano or, you know, something like that. Um, so and they're also called a renaissance person, you know, because they're able to experience all of these things. Uh, but, you know, sevens are in good company. Um, here's a list of some of the uh, celebrities or, or, you know, more well-known sevens. Um, Galileo, Mozart, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, uh, Chuck Berry, Elton John, Mick Jagger, um, Robin Williams, Jim Carrey, Bruce Willis. So, you know, you can see there's, there's some musicians there on that list piano players yeah. um a lot of entertainers yeah. uh you know i think a lot of people would be drawn to that personality and so that might be a natural fit for a seven is to be like i said the life of the party there these are all uh, most of those entertainers that you had mentioned yeah i can see i could see bruce willis as the seven mm -hmm. um yeah we talked about when they're healthy and unhealthy um so some of the other things let me get to my notes here too um one of the downfalls of seven, since they want to experience everything in life, uh, they tend to be a little bit impulsive. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, one of the things that they, they need to be mindful of is picking and choosing to not giving in to all of their impulses um, and to learn to listen to other people, which be, you know, to take constructive criticism uh, sometimes. Um, and since they're so, you know, keyed in on having so much stimulation at all times, you know, music and everything else going on, that they should really try to pick up on silence, you know, try to appreciate the, the silence and solitude a little bit more often um, and not so many of the distractions of life. Yeah. Um, anything else you'd like to add about sevens? Absolutely. I think you picked up on the really good growth areas for a seven. Uh, every, all of us have areas to grow, regardless of who we are, how old we are, what our personalities are. You've mentioned some great areas for a seven to, to uh, grow in greater maturity in their personality type. I would add to that, that because sevens, and, and I can speak to this, I have a child who's a seven. And so I've, I've learned so much about sevens by having a seven in my household that, and I can attest to the fact, sevens will do everything they can to repress pain. They'll leave the room when there's conflict. They, they want nothing to do with it. But you know what? In life, sometimes we learn a lot about pain uh, through pain. Um, it has something to teach us. And sometimes there's value in difficult conflict rather than avoiding conflict. Sometimes it's important to work through conflict. So I would suggest that to a seven is to really begin to think about uh, listening in conflict and not running away from conflict, but really trying to find the value in it and seeing how, how they can grow through a negative situation. And, and that there's, I, I believe, something to learn through those kinds of experiences. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, we talked about also too several times that, uh, you know, if you've got rose tinted glasses on going through life, 
thinking that there'll never be any conflict. You'll never experience a red light. <laughs> you'll never have to wait in line anywhere. Uh, you'll never be in a restaurant with a screaming child. I mean, you know, it's a little unrealistic to think about those things. So uh, there is healthy conflict. Conflict is good. Conflict is a part of life. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that kind of wraps up the sevens, the enthusiasts. Next video we'll do will be on the eight, which is the challenger. Um, so we hope that you all will join us for that. And uh, Dr. Mike, Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? Glad to be here. And thank you all for watching. If you are a seven or you have a seven in your life, we'd love to hear from you in the comments to see if uh, what we have said rings true with you. Yeah. And Wellness Wednesday is also part of our behavioral health program here at MCHD. So if anybody wants, uh, you know, to speak to a counselor or they're just, you know, they just want to talk about a situation, they want to know what's going on, they need some help talking through it. Uh, they can call and make an appointment with any of our behavioral health specialists at 251-690-8889. And of course, uh, if they're a member of a church, they can reach out to the pastor or a you know, social service worker or anyone else that, you know, they need some help. Well, thanks for joining us for Wellness Wednesday.